Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about amortization for bonds. And so previously we have talked about the amortization method as it pertains to loan repayment, but today we're going to talk about how to use the amortization method for bonds. Because sometimes when working with bonds, it's going to be necessary to determine the amount of interest received or principal returned in a bond coupon or a redemption payment. And so this can be done by viewing the bond as an amortized loan. And so if you haven't watched our lesson on level payment amortization for loan repayment, be sure to watch that first and familiarize yourself with the amortization method because we're going to be building upon the concepts that we established in that video when talking about amortization for bonds. And so what I have on the screen here are the components that I introduced you to in that lesson and we're going to be talking about how these components will either change or stay the same when we use the amortization method for bonds. And so in general, when we view the bond as an amortized loan, the price of the bond is what we would view as the amount of the loan. And so capital L, which used to represent the amount of the loan, that is now going to be P, the price of the bond. And so in a similar manner, the coupon and redemption payments for the bond can be viewed as the payments that would be made for the loan if we are viewing the bond as a loan in this scenario. And so the number of those payments is going to be N. That's not going to change. N is still going to represent the number of payments made. But in this case, you can think of it as being the number of coupons paid as well. But then what's going to change is K. K is what we use to represent the amount of the payment that would be made each period for a loan. In this case, that K is going to be the amount of the coupons. And so K is going to become F times R, or the face value of the bond, times the coupon rate of the bond, right? Because that is going to equal the amount of the coupon or the amount of the payments. However, this is not going to apply for all of our payments. It's going to apply to all of them but one, which is the final payment. Because if you remember, the way a bond works is the coupons are paid every coupon period, but then for the last coupon period, not only is a coupon paid, but the redemption amount is also paid. And so F times R is going to represent the amount of our payments up to the last period of N minus one, right? One period before we hit our final period where we make the final payment of the coupon and the redemption amount. And so K can also be equal to F times R plus F, the face value or the redemption amount. Usually they are the same unless stated otherwise. And so I'm just going to write it as F, the face amount. And so this right here is the payment of the last coupon and the redemption amount or the face value, and that is going to be your nth payment. Okay, and so next we have I, which is the interest rate for a loan when we use the amortization method. But in this case for a bond, I is going to become J, where J is the yield rate of our bond. All right, and then next we have capital O, capital B sub T, and this stood for the outstanding balance at a particular moment in time. And what that represented is how much more of a loan needed to be paid. And so we kind of view this from a different perspective when we're talking about the amortization of bonds. We won't call it the outstanding balance at time t. We will instead call it the book value at time t, right? So that is going to mean book value. And all that's telling us is what would the price of that bond be at a particular time t. Okay, and so instead of using the outstanding balance notation, we will be using this new notation, which means book value. Okay, and then finally we have capital I sub T, which is the interest accumulated at a particular time, and then we have capital P capital R sub T, which is the principal at a particular time T. And these two are going to be the exact same that they were for the amortization method for loan repayment. They're not going to change for bonds. We're going to use the exact same notation and they will be calculated pretty much the exact same way that they were calculated before. And so now that we have gone over all of the components for the amortization method for bonds, let's look at the formulas that we will use for the amortization of bonds. Okay, so here we have the previous formulas that we knew for the amortization method when dealing with loan repayment. And here we have our new formulas for when we use amortization for bonds. And so we would calculate the interest accumulated at time t plus one by multiplying the outstanding balance at time t times the interest rate. 
And so for bonds, to calculate the accumulated interest at time t plus 1, we will take the book value at time t and multiply it by the yield rate. And so it's the same calculation, but it just looks a little bit different because of how we change the notation when dealing with bonds. And you'll notice that that's going to be a pattern as we look at the rest of these formulas as well. And so previously, when we calculated the principal at time t plus 1, we would take the amount of our payment at that time and subtract the interest accumulated at that time. And that would be the same as taking that payment minus the outstanding balance at time t times the interest rate because that's what this accumulated interest was equal to. Okay, and so then for bonds, the principal at time t plus 1 will be equal to the coupon amount, capital F times R, minus the accumulated interest at time t plus 1. And that is also equal to the amount of the coupon minus the book value at time t times the yield rate j. And again, that's just replacing this with what it's equal to over here. However, there is one exception to this formula for calculating the principal for bonds. And that is that you need to remember that the final payment not only includes the amount of the coupon, but it also includes the redemption value or the face value. And so you need to remember that when you calculate the final principal of an amortization schedule for bonds. And we'll look at that later on in this video. But just remember that when you calculate the final principal, this payment amount also needs to include the redemption value. Okay, and then finally we want to look at the outstanding balance or the book value and previously we calculated the outstanding balance at time t plus 1 by taking the previous outstanding balance and subtracting the principal at that particular moment in time. And then we had a separate formula where we could find the outstanding balance at time t plus 1 by taking the previous outstanding balance, accumulating the interest for one period, and so we multiplied it by 1 plus i, and then we subtracted the amount of the payment. And so that's how we calculated the outstanding balance for loan repayment, but when we're using the amortization method for bonds, we will be calculating the book value at time t plus 1, and that would be found by taking the previous book value and subtracting the principal paid at that time t plus 1, or the other way is to take that previous book value and accumulate the interest using that yield rate and then subtract the amount of the payment, or in this case the amount of the coupon, f times r. Okay, and so these are the formulas that you need to know for using the amortization method for bonds. Okay, so now that we have looked at these formulas, let's take a look at using them in action with an example problem. All right, so here's our example problem. We have that a two-year 1,000 par value bond has a coupon rate of 6% convertible semi-annually. It is sold at a yield rate of 5% convertible semi-annually. Fill in the amortization table for this bond. Okay, so here we have our amortization table, or you can also call it an amortization schedule, where what we want to do is figure out the original book value at time zero, and then fill in all of these values for time equals one, two, three, and four, for the book value, the amount of the payment K, the interest accumulated, and the principal. Okay, and so the first thing that we wanna do here is determine what the book value is at time equals zero. And so previously, when we worked with amortization for a loan repayment, we said that the amount of the loan is what the outstanding balance would be at time equals zero, and that would be the equivalent of the book value. However, when we're working with bonds, the original amount of the loan per se is the price of the bond. And so the first thing we have to do here is calculate the price of the bond in this example. And so let's write down everything we know about this bond. We know that it is a two-year bond, and so, remember, bonds pay coupons semi-annually, and so that means that two coupons are paid per year, and so if we're counting the number of coupon periods, or the number of coupons that would be paid, it's not just going to be two, instead n will be equal to two times two, which is equal to four. All right, and then next we know that the par value of the bond is 1,000, and so that means that the face value and the redemption value are both equal to 1,000, and so we have that f is equal to c, which is equal to 1,000. Right, f is the face value of the bond and c is the redemption value. Then we know that the bond is a coupon rate of 6% convertible semi-annually. And remember, we assume that that is a nominal annual rate convertible semi-annually. And so in order to get the coupon rate, we have to divide that percent by two. And so we will have that the coupon rate r is equal to 0.06 divided by two, and that is equal to 0.03. And if you're confused on this part, if you're not sure why I'm dividing that percent by two, 
Be sure to watch our video on bond valuation. I explain it a little bit more in depth in that video. But then the next thing that we know about this bond is that it is sold at a yield rate of 5% convertible semi-annually, which we also assume is a nominal annual interest rate that we need to divide by two to get the usable yield rate. And so we will have that J is equal 2.05 divided by two, which is equal to 0.025. Okay, so now we have everything that we know about this bond and now we can calculate its price and that will give us the book value at time equals zero. Okay, and so the price formula for a bond is that P is equal to the face value times the coupon rate times the present value of an annuity with an N number of payments using the yield rate J plus the redemption amount times the present value factor to the power of N using the yield rate J. Okay, and so if we plug in all of our values into this formula, we will have that the price is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.03 times A for bracket 0 0.025 plus 1,000 times the present value factor to the power of four using the yield rate 0 0.025. All right, and so if we write out the formula for this notation as well as this present value factor, we will have that the price is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.03. That's just equal to 30, and that will be multiplied by this formula of one minus the present value factor to the power of four divided by 0 0.025 plus 1,000 times one divided by 1.025 to the power of four, okay? And so remember that this present value factor will be the same as this. And so remember to rewrite that when you plug all this into your calculator. But if you did that, you would find that the price is equal to $1,018.81 if you round up to that second decimal place. Okay, and so this right here is the book value at time equals zero. And so if we clean up our work here, we can now write in our value for the book value at time zero right here. And so that will be $1,018 and 81 cents. Okay, and so now we're ready to start filling in the rest of this amortization table. And the first thing that I always like to do is fill in the payment column because that's pretty easy to fill in. We know that all of our payments, except for the last one, are going to be equal to the amount of the coupon. And the amount of the coupon is just F, the face value, times R, the coupon rate. And so in this case, F times R is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.03, which is equal to 30. And so each of these payments up until the last one will be $30. And so I'll fill that in. We have 30 here, 30 here, and 30 there. Now for the last payment, it's going to increase because we not only pay the payment amount of 30, but we also pay the redemption amount C. And so that last payment is going to include that $1,000 as well. So we'll add the $1,000 to 30, and we will have that our last payment is $1,030. Okay, so now we have entirely filled in this column of all of our payment amounts. And so now we can begin to fill in the rest of these columns and these rows. And so the first thing that you wanna calculate is the interest at time one. And the interest at time one is equal to the book value at time zero times the yield rate. So if we take this value of the book value at time zero and multiply it by J, which is 0 0.025, that will give us the interest accumulated at time one. And so if we do that, that will be equal to $25.47, right? In order to get this value, I just multiplied this book value times the yield rate, 0 0.025. And so we can fill that in in our chart. We'll have 25.47. And now the next thing that we can calculate is the amount of the principal at time equals one. And the principal is found by subtracting the amount of interest from the amount of your payment. And so to find the principal at time one, we will take our amount of the payment 30 and subtract I sub one or the interest at time one, which we have right here. And so if you subtract 25.47, from 30, you will get $4.53. Okay, and so now that we know what the principal is equal to, we can find the amount of the book value at time one by subtracting that principal from the book value at time zero, right? In order to find the next book value at time one, you have to take the previous book value and subtract 
the principal at that time where you want to calculate the book value. And so if we subtract $4.53 from $1,018.81, you will get $1,014.28. Okay, and so then we follow a similar pattern for the rest of these values in this table. And so the next thing that we would calculate for the next row would be the interest at time two, and you would find that by multiplying the yield rate by the book value at time one. And so if you do that, if you multiply the yield rate by this book value at time one, you will find that I sub two is $25.36. And so then we could calculate the principal at time two by subtracting that amount of interest from the amount of the payment, which is $30. And so if you subtract 25.36 from 30, you will get a principal at time two of 4.64. And then once again, we could calculate the next book value by subtracting that principal from the previous book value. And so if we subtract 4.64 from 1014.28, we will get that the book value at time two is 1009.64. All right, and then we can repeat this process again for time equals three. To get the interest at time three, we will multiply the yield rate by that new book value at time two. And so if we do that, we will find that the interest is $25.24. And then if we subtract that interest from the payment, we will get the principal at time three. And so subtracting 25.24 from 30 will give you $4.76. And then we can find our book value at time three by subtracting that principal from the previous book value at time equals two. And so if we subtract 4.76 from 1009.64, we will have that the book value at time three is 1,004.88. All right, so then we're on our last period of time here, time equals four. And so the first thing that we can calculate in this row would be the interest accumulated at time equals four. And so all we have to do to find that is multiply the yield rate by the book value at time three. And so if we do that, you will find that the interest paid in the last period is 25.12. And so if you subtract 25.12, from this payment here, right? Remember in the last year, the amount of the payment changed from just being 30 to 30 plus the face value, which is $1,000. And so we're subtracting 25.12 from $1,030. And so the principal this time around will be $1,004.88, which if you notice is the exact same amount as the previous book value. And so that means that our last book value will just be equal to zero because we're subtracting this principal from this book value. And so we will have zero dollars and zero cents for our book value at time equals four, which makes sense. At that moment in time, the book value of the bond should be completely depleted, just like the outstanding balance of a loan would be completely depleted by the time the last payment is made on the loan. Okay, and so that's how you would fill in this amortization table for a bond using the amortization method. And so I just wanna make a note of something here real quick, that if you have an example like this, where instead of having a yield rate that is smaller than your coupon rate, let's say you had a yield rate that was larger, that would cause the price of your bond to be less than the face value, meaning that it would have been bought at a discount. And when that happens, rather than buying it at a premium like we have here, you will get principal amounts that will be negative. And that will be because you have interest amounts that will be greater than the amount of your payments until the last payment where everything evens out and your book value will still be zero. Okay, so just be aware that that can happen. All right, but before we end this lesson, I have some extra formulas that I wanna make you aware of that you might want to write down as well. Okay, so here I have two extra formulas that you might want to know when working with amortization for bonds, and that is that you can calculate the amount of the principal or the book value at any particular moment in time by using these formulas. You don't have to go through all of the amortization calculations to get a particular amount of the book value or the particular amount of a principal that you might be interested in. All right, and so these formulas can be pretty helpful for certain scenarios, and so be sure to make a note of them. And so that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more example problems, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.